Welcome back. The theme of tonight's Eucharistic Liturgy is a love full of action. Join in prayer along with our celebrant, Cardinal Robert McElroy, Bishop of the Diocese of San Diego. Music will be led by Sarah Hart, who will be joined by a choir made up of many RE Congress participants. Later this evening at 8.30 p.m., join us for a magical evening presented by Giancarlo Bernini. Through his gift of magic, he will challenge us to see beyond magic to the deeper reality of God's love and unconditional forgiveness for each one of us. Once again, I encourage you to view the live stream schedule on our website for a listing of tomorrow's events. Be well and thank you for being with us this evening.
What can that mean for our American church? And for those of you who will be attending the Congress, the tens of thousands of you, your task is not to attend the Congress. Your task is to go out from there on mission so that the healing that is desired in his sacred heart may flow forth over this land.
we gather in this sacred space. Beloved brothers, sisters, and siblings in Christ, we who love because we were loved first, receive the love of God and put it into action. As we gather to give thanks to the God who has loved us into being, we recognize and celebrate all of the ways that we make God's love active in the lives of others. We are educators, catechists, parents, students, vowed sisters and brothers, priests, deacons, those who engage in works of mercy, those whose ministry is to support their spouses, friends, and loved ones in their ministries. You are seen, you are loved, you are welcome here. We gather knowing that at times we have failed to be God's love full of action. We are both saints and sinners. We share God's love and receive God's love. And through it all, we belong to the God who sustains us. We are seen, we are loved, we are welcome here.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. May the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Welcome to all of you. Todos, todos, todos. We gather from every corner of the world here in this place to celebrate our faith, to come closer to our God to build community across all kinds of barriers, to learn more what it means to be the synodal church in this synodal moment. And it is such a great grace to have this Congress every year, which is a gift to all of us in the Catholic community in the United States and throughout much of the world. As I want to thank all of our bishops who are here locally and from the farthest corners of the world, you are welcome here as a sign of the universality of our church and our faith. We come together as people of faith. We strive to live by the gospel of Jesus Christ. Sometimes we succeed magnificently and sometimes we fail. So let us call to mind our sins and ask for forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life, and let us pray. Show forth gracious favor, O Lord, we pray, to the works of penance we have begun, that we may have strength to accomplish with sincerity the bodily observances we undertake. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord God, cry out full-throated and unsparingly. Lift up your voice like a trumpet blast. Tell my people their wickedness and the house of Jacob their sins. They seek me day after day and desire to know my ways like a nation that has done what is just and not abandoned the law of their God. They ask me to declare what is due them, please to gain access to God. Why do we fast and you do not see it? Afflict ourselves and you take no note of it? Lo, on your fast day you carry out your own pursuits and drive all your laborers. Yes, your fast ends in quarreling and fighting, striking with wicked claw. Would that today you might fast as to make your voice heard on high. Is this the manner of fasting I wish, of keeping of day of penance, that a man bow his head like a reed and lie in sackcloth and ashes? Do you call this a fast, a day acceptable to the Lord? 
This rather is the fasting that I wish, releasing those bound unjustly, untying the thongs of the yoke, setting free the oppressed, breaking every yoke, sharing your bread with the hungry, sheltering the oppressed and the homeless, clothing the naked when you see them, and not turning your back on your own. Then your light shall break forth like the dawn, and your wounds shall quickly be healed. Your vindication shall go before you, and the glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call, and the Lord will answer. You shall cry for help, and he will say, here I am. The word of the Lord. Sacrifice 
to Matthew. The disciples of John approached Jesus and said, why do we and the Pharisees fast much, but your disciples do not fast? Jesus answered them, can the wedding guests mourn as long as the bridegroom is with them? The days will come when the bridegroom is taken away from them and then they will fast. The Gospel of the Lord. Ten years ago, the great American film director Terrence Malick, who has spent so much of his life wrestling with themes of faith and human striving and human suffering and human achievement, issued a film that was called The Tree of Life. And it really focused on the life of a man named Jack O'Brien who had grown up in Texas in the 1950s in a very religious household. And it begins, though, in 1970, when he's an adult, a very successful architect, and has accomplished a tremendous amount. And yet, as he sits in his office and ponders his life, he is deeply saddened because he has become estranged from God. And he says, where are you, God? And with that, the film unfolds with the whole of creation. And the words of God come down. Where were you from the book of Job? Where were you when the heavens were created and the earth came forth? And the beauty of the light and the sun and the moon and the stars and the waters and the land all unfolding and life developing in all of its forms unfold before your eyes in all the magnificent of what creation must have been. And as he ponders that, what comes back to him in his life is his mother's words to him. His mother said, there are two orders in this world, the order of nature and the order of grace. The order of nature is hard, rugged. It is getting ahead, thinking of yourself, 
The order of nature is the opposite. The order of, na I'm sorry, the order of grace is the opposite. The order of grace is stopping to savor the beauty of God's blessings that lie around us every day. And the whole of the movie really is Jack's understanding of how his parents, his mother and his father, represented two different orders. His father represented the order of nature. His mother represented the order of grace. His father was a good man, a man of faith. He had wanted to be a concert organist and was very talented. But because his father had died early in his life, he was not able to do that and had to get a job working to support his family. And he worked very hard and he was very creative and he's very intelligent. But every time in life when it seemed like he would accomplish something really magnificent, someone else beat him to it. And so he taught his sons to be tough. Always fight hard. Never let the other guy get ahead. Never give him an even break because they won't give you an even break. He was the order of nature. His mother, on the other hand, was the order of grace. She said to her three sons, don't go through life missing all of the beauty of God's grace that is there, all the glory that is around you every day. Don't become so focused on accomplishing things or attaining things that you lose sight of what is truly important in living in this pilgrimage here on this earth. And so, as the story goes on, Jack comes to understand that he in his life must make a choice. His mother has died, and his father is still alive, and they're still communicating, but not close. And his father comes to him and says to him, son, I was wrong in what I taught you. I have gone through life and missed all the glory that was there. I was a man of faith, but could not see the beauty of God right before me every day in your mother and in the three of you and in the surroundings and the beauty of nature and all of those beauties of poetry of the human heart and soul, which we experience every day but so often don't stop to save her. He says, don't do what I did. Don't waste your life. Seize the grace. See the glory. In a very real way, for us in the church, seeking to transform the world, we are called to live in the order of grace in that beauty, to savor the wonderful blessings that God has put in our lives every day, little things that we so easily go past and don't stop to cherish and understand and let grow more deeply in our lives. In today's gospel, Jesus is talking about the question of, of doing without things during the Lenten season. And he says, the bridegroom is still with you. The bridegroom is still with us now. And we must live a life of joy as if that is true and we believe it. And we find Christ every day in beauty and in others and in companionship and friendship and the laughter of a child in an act of forgiveness particularly in our nation today, we must live with the joy of understanding that we live in grace and that the bridegroom is among us and we can't let ourselves be weighed down by all the problems that face us in this world because we must know that that's not the real part of the world that must dominate our lives, but rather the grace that is there that is reachable by us and for us 
and given as gift to others. Pope Francis has said so repeatedly and profoundly, we must live as a joyful community of faith. And I think there is no greater gift that we can give to particularly in our country at this time than that of joy and of grace and of accentuating all of the wonderful blessings that we have received and that are available to all of us every day. So let us love and let us live and let us live joyfully because the bridegroom is still among us. And let us stand and bring our prayers before the Lord. We turn to God the Father from whom all blessings flow with needs not only for ourselves, but for many who are not with us today. And so we pray. We pray for the church, the people of God, for a uniting love to overcome division and woundedness, for a courageous love to be people of justice and humility, for a love that accompanies all catechumens and candidates on their journey towards a full communion with the church, for a love that reaches out to those seeking signs of God's act of love in the world around them. We pray. We pray for the world, for leaders to commit themselves to peaceful reconciliation, for communities where love is fragile or hidden, for all those overwhelmed by war and unrest, for all refugees who seek safety and love in a new land, we pray. Pray for those in need, for those living with poverty, addiction, and homelessness, for those who are ignored, diminished, and dismissed by society, for those who are crying out for an encounter with a love full of action, we pray. for our community gathered here, for a bold love to be a church that reaches out 
to those in need, for a compassionate love that moves us to be a field hospital church, for a humble love to be a listening church. We pray. God's mercy, we remember our beloved dead, those who have died alone and unmourned, and those who will enter eternal life. Today, we pray. We humbly present our needs with thanksgiving and trust in your everlasting love. Let us come alive in your mercy and build your kingdom of love through Christ our Lord. Amen.
pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. We offer you, O Lord, the sacrifice of our Lenten observance, praying that it may make our intentions acceptable to you and add to our powers of self-restraint through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by your gracious gift each year, your faithful await the sacred Paschal feast with the joy of minds made pure, so that more eagerly intent on prayer and on the works of charity, and participating in the mysteries by which they have been reborn, they may be led to the fullness of grace that you bestow on your sons and daughters. So with the angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us in the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love and when, as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which he poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us and grant that by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. 
Bring your church, O Lord, to perfect faith and charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Kevin, our Bishop, Jose, our Metropolitan, with all the bishops, priests, and deacons, and the entire people of God, you have made your own. Open our eyes to the needs of our brothers and sisters. Inspire in us words and actions to, make, to comfort those who labor and are burdened. Make us serve them truly after the example of Christ and at his command. And may your church stand as a living witness to truth and freedom, to peace and justice, that all people might be raised to a new hope. Remember all our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face, and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us, when your earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever, there in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the apostles, the martyrs, and all the saints. We shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. All of us of every land and race and people and way of life are one family, the family of the God who is Father of us all. Let us pray as one family in the word our Lord has given us. Our Father, Deliver us, Lord, from every evil and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from all undue anxiety and shelter us in your love and grace through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Peace be with you. I'm sorry, I still. Lamb of God, I just realized I have sinned. <laughs> I'm sorry. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
Let us pray. We pray, Almighty God, that through partaking of this mystery, we may be cleansed of our misdeeds and so be suited for the remedies of your compassion through Christ our Lord. <clears throat> you know, <clears throat> whenever I come here for the Congress, there's so many wonderful dimensions to it, the talks, the gatherings, the music, the socializing. But most importantly, I think, and most moving are the liturgies filled with beauty and the allure of the glory of God, and music and movement and proclamation of the word and in the participation in the Eucharist. And most of all, in the unity and the unison thousands of hearts 
together, coming together around this altar in Jesus Christ. It is, in a very special way, as the prayers of the church teach us, the foretaste of the Paschal Feast of Heaven in so many ways. So I'm great, uh, grateful to be here, grateful to all of you for your ministries. I want to thank particularly all the bishops who are here and particularly the bishops who have come from so far. You are assigned to us that we are a global church of every land and nation and people. And I want to thank... And I want to thank all my brother priests who are here, my brother deacons, because I'm still a deacon. I thank you for being here. I want to thank all who have prepared this liturgy and worked so hard for it. I know the amount of labor that goes into this uh, to make everything go on time, even and in the right order, even with a celebrant who doesn't get everything right. <laughs> and again, thank you for the beautiful, wonderful gift of music and for the gift of movement. all of you who are here who are ministers of the church in so many different ways you are the voice of the church calling out to the mission in the world to proclaim Christ in all things the Christ who came to touch us in the depths of our hearts to bear us up in our suffering to carry us through in times of hardship and loss to bring us joy and overwhelming happiness in those moments of our lives which are truly grace-filled and leave us understanding what it means to live in heavenly bliss. Thank you for all of you and for all you do. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thanks be to God. Yes, and